Hi, this is Life and Groovy Entertainment. Today we got another CD to play for you. Today's CD is Superman Story 18 from 1940. So let's get started. Presenting the transcription feature, Superman. Up in the sky, look, it's a bird, it's a plane, it's Superman. And now, Superman, faster than an airplane. Stronger than a locomotive, able to leap tall buildings at a single bound. Champion of the weak and the oppressed. Tireless fighter for truth and justice. When we last saw him, Superman had just rescued Lois Lane from a gang of convicts at San Miguel Prison. Only to learn at the last minute that the two leaders of the riot, Kino and the Wolf, have made good their escape in the confusion. Alarms ring and sirens wail, but the two fugitives are nowhere to be seen. Ken and Lois return home, bringing their story of the riot. And by a curious coincidence, the Wolf and Kino arrive in the same city at about the same time. Following instructions, they make their way to the underground hideout of the Yellow Mask. Now listen, Lois, you sure you know where you're going? Certainly, you know. Although while they were told to take this roundabout way, I'm sure I can't tell you. Leave that to the mask, boys. He knows what he's doing. Indeed, Kino. Then perhaps you can explain why he left us so long in that confounded jail. He knows what he's doing. He should well, never have let us go to jail at all. Well, how could he help it? That guy kept the report. It's his business to help it. He made fools of us. Is that enough that it be you say that, boys? Uh, you'll hear me say more than that when I find it. Uh, it's not where you are. We've arrived. I don't see nothing. This is just a blank wall. Watch, Kino. There. Keep looking, Kino. Look right at the wall. Gee, it's a door. Open up right in the rock. Inside, quick. Uh, and just in time, too. There's a police car not far off. Hey, you think they're looking for us? Possibly. But they'll never find us. Stand back, you know, while the door closes. Gee, it's pitch black. I can't see where I am. It's a passage. Just walk straight ahead. Is this where we'll find the mask? I hope so, Kino. And when I do find him, there'll be a settlement which is quite a bit overdue. Hey, boss, now think what you're saying. Kino, I've made up my mind. The mask has run things far too long. It's my turn now. Now, you can't say that. But I do say it. Why should I take second place? I'll run things myself. From now on, there's not room for both of us. As to that, my friend, I entirely agree with you. It's him. The mask. Turn on the lights. In the house of the mask, my friend. Careful what you say. Very well, mask. You heard me. It's either you or I. And since I happen to have a pistol here in my pocket... So, you brought a pistol. This is the last time you stand in the way of high voltage. <laughs> that finishes the wolf. Kino, I think I heard you use the term boss. You will remember after this to whom it applies. Uh, yeah, sure. Well, well, whatever you say. Uh, what did you want to see us about? Plans, Kino. Great plans in which you should have a share. Plans that concern millions of dollars and thousands of lives stand quietly where you are now. And almost at the same time that the Yellow Mask tells Kino of his plans, editor Perry White of the Daily Planet speaks to Clark Kent and Lois Lane of a new assignment. Hello there, Lois. Come in, close the door. Did you want to see both of us, Mr. White? I certainly did. You made out so well on that first break that I'm going to send you and Kent out again. Gee, that's great, Mr. White. I'm sure Mr. Kent could cover it much better alone. Well, you're going along, Lois. So sit down and listen. Have either of you heard what's going on in Dryerville? I haven't heard a thing about anything. I have, Chief. Oh, the human encyclopedia. He knows about everything. You know where Dryerville is, Lois? Only more or less, Mr. White. Well, it's up in the hill. A flourishing little city of about 30,000. Since about two weeks ago, they've been calling it the Jinx Town. The Jinx Town? All those accidents. Is that why, Mr. White? Well, first they thought it was funny. And then it got serious. No, they don't know what to think. Why, what happened? Curious, unbelievable accident. Nothing very striking at first. Just all the radio sets went out of whack. All at once? All at once. And then the telephone. Say, that might have been serious. It was, Ken. Then two days ago, although there haven't been any rains, the town was flooded. Flooded? 
three feet deep in water. Without any warning at all, the Jefferson River went over its banks and mighty near drowned them all out. Mr. White, anything else? That was two days ago, Ken. Yesterday, all the electric power in the city went off. And today, they were rocked by a series of earthquakes. Earthquakes? In this section of the country? Well, heavy explosions far underground. And they don't know what to make of them. People are excited, naturally, and now they're just a little bit afraid. Well, do you blame them? They're asking themselves, what's behind all this? And that's where you're sending me and Ken. If you're sure you don't mind, Lois. Well, I'd feel safer with a more adequate escort. Oh, gosh, Miss Lane, I'll do the best I can to keep you out of trouble. Thank you, Mr. Kent. I'm usually able to do that much for myself. When do we leave, Mr. Boyd? As soon as you can. Get an advance from the cashier and hire a car. A car? What's the matter with the train? Mm, I don't know. I just have a feeling. <laughs> Mr. White, what do you mean? There's something back of this, Lois. I don't understand it. All these things aren't accidents. Mr. White, do you think they're intended? I don't know, Kent. But if they are, well, I'd rather have you on a car than on a train heading into Dyerville. So come along, I'll see you as far as the can. Are you sure you know which way you're going, Mr. Kent? Look, Lois, couldn't you call me Clark? Sorry, for some reason I seem to prefer Mr. Kent, and I also prefer Miss Lane. All right, Miss Lane. As I was saying, are you sure you're on the right road? Positive. There was the route sign back away to Dyerville. Then aren't we almost there? What time is it? Uh, too dark to see. You mind turning on the dome light? Thanks. Uh, it's half past 11. Look out, there's a car coming. I see it. Look out, he's coming straight at us, Mr. Kent! Uh, idiot, he almost put us in the ditch. Driving like a maniac, too. What's the matter? Nothing, Mr. Kent. Was there anything strange about that car? Strange? How do you mean? I thought, well, of course I didn't get a very good look at it, but I thought I'd seen it before. Not me. I thought it passed us a while ago, going the other way. What would he be doing that for? Oh, look here, Lois. I, I mean, Miss Lane. You're tired and upset. Oh, no, I'm not. Oh, I say you are. Well, think about something else. How about switching on the radio, huh? Thanks, I'd rather not. Oh, come on. At least we get the late news. Must you hear the news? Oh, why not? Give it a chance to warm up first. Look, Miss Lane, there ahead. That's Dyerville. Down there, over the river? Uh-huh. That's the Jefferson. We cross the toll bridge, and then we're in Dyerville. Nothing doing on the radio? I really don't know. Maybe it's broken. Huh. Lights up all right. Look out. There's a car coming up behind us. Yeah, coming fast, too. Mr. Kent, be careful. He's not turning out. Look out! He's a crazy idiot. Mr. Kent, it was the same car. You're right. Where did I get his number? Hang on. Well, what's that? Oh, the radio. I'm going to catch that fellow if it's the last thing I do. Go back, Mr. Kent. Go back. Go back. Go back. Mr. Kent, that voice. Where does it come from? The radio. That's not possible. Someone called me by name. Go back, Mr. Kent. Go back. Go back. Go back. That car. That's where it comes from. There's a radio transmitter in that car. Now I've got to catch it. Right ahead. There's the bridge. Bridge or no bridge, I'm going to catch that car. Hang on, Lois. It's gone, Mr. Kent. There's not a sign of it. Well, it must be. It can't have vanished. Mr. Kent, be careful. The toll bridge. There's a man there in the martyrdom. Look out, they're going right through them! Did you have to go so fast? Just look what you've done to the gates. Lucky if they don't take away your light. Hey, why do you think you're gone? Can't you see the lights? I'm sorry, officer. Really, I... I bet you'll be sorry. Let me see your license, young fellow. This is a toll bridge, not a speedway. I'll pay the toll. I hope to tell you you'll pay the toll. And you'll pay for them gates, too. And about fifty dollars for reckless driving. Oh, it, it, it wasn't reckless driving, officer. I was chasing that car ahead, and I just what had car? To... What car ahead? You're the only car on this bridge in the last half hour. Well, I tell you, there was a car. I saw it. Keep on, and you'll see pink elephants and green elephants. All right. How much is the toll? Uh, never you mind the toll. That's the least of your worries. The bridge. It's shaking. What's the matter? The bridge. It's another quake. Run. Run. <laughs> Got to save the bridge and save Lois. Not much time. 
Good thing it's dark. They couldn't see Clark Kent change into Superman. If I can get down underneath it, down on the piers, quick, it's going. Matter of seconds. Down. Down. Down through the darkness, Superman plummets like an arrow, while the great structure of struts and cables sways and groans above the river, while the car containing Lois Lane slips, halts, and slips again nearer to the sudden brink that yawns suddenly where a moment before was solid pavement. Can the man of steel save the bridge of steel? Or have matters already gone beyond the power of even his incalculable strength? And whose was the voice on the radio? And what terrible fate hangs over the town of Dyerville? Tune in next time and follow the story. And remember... Be sure to tune in the next thrilling installment of the amazing transcription feature, Superman. Up in the sky, look, it's a bird. It's a plane. It's Superman. Superman is a copyrighted feature appearing in Action Comics magazine. So that was Superman's story. So that was Superman Story 18 from 1940. So if you like, subscribe, share, and comment, and have a groovy day. We have another video coming out real soon.